Well, Peter Weir is one of Australia's most respected and accomplished directors. The first major film he made was Picnic at Hanging Rock. It won worldwide acclaim before he directed a stream of box office hits such as Gallipoli and The Year of Living Dangerously. He's a man constantly looking to tell different stories, ranging from The Truman Show to his more recent film Master and Commander. Next week, after a seven-year hiatus, Peter Weir's film The Way Back is released in Australia. It tells the story of Soviet prisoners who escape the gulag and walk thousands of kilometres through snow and desert seeking freedom. I spoke to him earlier today in Sydney. Peter Weir, it's been seven years now since your Mm. last film. What's taken so long? Well, it went by in a flash for me. (laughs) I was working on other things. I had, you know, about three projects and... Not one of them would really, you know, come, get up and stand up and, and uh, I could go forward with it. You know, one night left, all kinds of things. But this was number four and where my patience was being tested. Now, the story is basically one that, mm. that has people who were in a Soviet gulag breaking out, walking 10,000 kilometres, mm. going through all of the elements. It must have been incredibly difficult to film. Yeah, firstly, of course, intense planning. And I had a very good team, the nucleus uh, of the team I'd had on Master and Commander, another um, highly planned film for different reasons. Uh, and we really had to make every day work. It was, that was the challenge of the film, not so much the physical uh, settings. You know, yes, we four-wheel drives, getting up into forests or mountains or out in the deserts. Um, but it was the knowledge that you had to come back that night with all of the material photographed. There was no going back the next day because we were somewhere else in the location. So that was the pressure, really. We need meat. I can make traps. No, we'll be moving too fast to wait for traps. We find farms and villages, get food there. Look, there's a bounty on our heads. Remember that. We steal it at night. They never know. We are not thieves. And I will steal it and I will eat you can watch. What is that? Barbed wire. He's making a fish hook. That's how we will survive. You've based it on the book that that you mm. read and that you prompted you to make this film. Mm. But there are now some question marks over the authenticity of the story itself, whether the author did experience this yeah. or it was actually the story of others. How did that make you feel? Well, you know, I nearly backed out of it, you know, because it's called a true story. And uh, I said to the producers, well... You know, if we can prove the walk happened, I can do the film. I'll adapt it. In the research, I uncovered all kinds of walks people do. Um, you know, in one instance, um, the son of one of these uh, survivors lives in New Zealand, uh, Henry Hudson, and his father, he had a Polish name, had walked from Poland through Afghanistan and down through Persia, and, and that was his walk. Uh, and all kinds of people walked, you know, particularly at the end of the war, all the displaced persons and ex-POWs, a lot of them walked home. You went to National Geographic to make this mm. film, which is a first. Mm. Why did you not go to the more traditional avenues of Hollywood? Well, the studios are in another kind of business now, and I've worked with them for 20 years, really. But they've concentrated now on you know, these what they call tentpole films and essentially young people's material. You know, some of it very good, but uh, you know, it's fantasy particularly, uh, animation. Uh, and they're looking for those billion-dollar grosses. Phenomenal amount of money. And to get that kind of money, you have to have repeat business. And nothing's better than children for repeat business. They just want to go again and again and again. Are you thinking like the Harry Potter blockbusters and so on? Oh, yes, and Lord of the Rings too, I think, in its own way. Uh, and, but, you know, the, the subject matter is often very limiting. You know, it's good versus evil, basically. Well, that's not enough for an adult to be occupied with. You know, there's <laughs> a lot in between those two descriptive words. Is there too much focus then on the younger demographic? Is that the direction we're headed in? Well, you know, I think it's, it makes business sense, I suppose, for, for those paying for films. And it's wonderfully, you know, it's not a, you know, a medium that needs, you know, the support of governments. It's, it's, it's a healthy, alive business. People love movies. What I th- would be critical about is the studios and a lot of uh, distributors in the United States particularly have just thrown away a whole audience, you know, which is the adult audience. They've gone either to this gold rush, you know, trying to find the next, uh, you know, sort of vampire series or, ha- or Harry Potter or something, and meanwhile, people, you know, I'm sure you'd have friends, I do, who say, 
What is it with the movies? There's nothing on during the year. Everything's at the end of the year, You're like an adult film festival. You know, and, and so I think that's where um, they're missing. You know, very good business, and they should release some of these films during the year and cater to that audience. Do you worry that that, that approach is in fact going to limit the number of, of the sorts of films that you've just made? Um, yes, although I think I'm at a point, you know, if I was starting out now, I'd be very concerned. And I am concerned for younger filmmakers, in a way. You if know, you I'm were saying. starting out, what would you do now? Uh, I would not try and beat a path to Hollywood. Not that I did when I was young. I made films here for, you know, 10, 15 years. But here now, I'd concentrate on television, I think, uh, and the Australian audience. I don't think I would go down the film path. Uh, you know, someone like, it was so impressive, like Chris Lilly. Um, Rob Carlton, you know, these are people who have gone into television and really made very interesting programs. And if, you know, somebody comes knocking at your door, you know, whereas with Chris Lilly, HBO, BBC, great. Or if someone says, why don't you come and do a film? But let them come to us. Let's make it here. That's, what, that's the way I would approach it if I was starting. How would you categorise the, the state of the Australian film industry mm. at the moment, if, if you're saying that TV is the place to start out in now? Well, if we talk about just talent, uh, it's very healthy. In front of the camera and behind the camera, wonderful people, and they just keep coming. You know, the, the sort of underbelly series, the first series, produced a wonderful crop of actors, new to me, um, you know, and then behind the camera too, terrific directors. Uh, but I think the... You know, the kind of challenge remains distribution again. I would love to see uh, a sort of young Harvey Weinstein appear on the scene here, you know, or start saying, I'm not going to be a director or an actor. I am going to create a distribution company and get out to that audience, and I'm going to open an office in L.A. and New York. That would be thrilling. Do you think it's an industry that is prepared to take enough risks? Here in Australia? Well, you know, I don't think we really have a film industry. We have a television industry. I think we have filmmakers, you know, and it's, uh, it's true of most national film industries. There's really only Bollywood and Hollywood. Uh, the rest of us just struggle along picture by picture, and, you know, so you look to individuals. Uh, that's why we do need, you know, world marketing and world markets, which makes it tough. Um, yeah, we'll see. It's an interesting period. I mean, no one knows quite where this will settle, but it would be a horrible thought that in the future, movies would just be for children. So what comes next? What's the next project? The needle in the haystack. <laughs> I have to just keep looking for that next project, you know. Uh, I can't wait another seven years. Can't count on that. So I'm ready do... to work. You know, I'd love to get to work. But so I... you do want to make more films? Oh, absolutely, yeah. It's just, it's just finding that, that project that's, that's special. You know, then, then, you know, on I go. Do you think you're getting fussy? Well, I suppose I always have been. You know, there's a, there's a side of me, a kind of daytime Peter Weir, that is quite agreeable to do all sorts of things. So the nighttime Peter Weir is the tough one. The nighttime one says, you shouldn't do this. It's not really you. And the daytime one says, let's get to work. Let's go and make a film. You know, so it's a kind of dialogue between these two sides of my nature, I think. But the night one always wins. But it's certainly not time for a career change yet. You do want to make some more. I think it's a little late to get into real estate, which was my original plan. Well, Peter Weir, I wish you luck you. with your latest film and we look forward to the next project, whatever it is. Thank you.